Adam got me something pretty spectacular for Christmas and I am going to try using them. It is cast iron bread pans made by Lodge. So I just oiled them. I'm going to throw them in the oven just for an extra seasoning and I'm going to try and make some bread later. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I made the the dough. Um, I am making a English muffin bread. So never done this before. I usually don't very do very good with bread anyway. So I don't know. We'll just have to see how this turns out. Okay, I don't even really want to show you guys this because it is not. It's not pretty. Hopefully things will smooth out when they're when they raise a little bit. But here, in the new cast iron, gotta let it raise and then we'll bake it. Okay, so yeah, they didn't rise. I don't know why. Um, we were doing a bunch of stuff in the house, so I don't know if the shaking of the house. But here they are. I'm gonna put them in the oven anyway, see what happens. Can't get any worse than it already is. And it'll still taste like bread. So I just took them out of the oven. Honestly, they don't look too bad. They puffed up after or when they started cooking. So here they are now. So I'm gonna slap some butter on them and we're gonna have to try a piece here pretty soon. So see you in a bit. Well, so far, um, the cast iron pan has made a beautiful brown crust on it. I mean, it's just nice and golden. Got the butter on, so it's going to let it cool a little bit yet. Don't need to melt our faces off, so. Now I'm a little bit excited about this. Alright, just wanted to show that these bread pans they're not sticky. Just a wow. bloop. How nice is that? Yeah, they're not monster loaves, but... I bet they taste like bread. Probably. That should be alright, huh? I hope so, anyway. So, would you say that the cast iron bread pans are a success? So far. Even I... after I screw up the recipe. Well, I think... The cooking with cast iron is, is a little bit different. You have to kind of learn how to cook with it. It's it's not like how you grew up with Teflon and aluminum right. pans. It, it takes a little time, and that's probably what we have here. Oh, yeah, but it didn't stick. It didn't nothing. Just awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's try it. It's sweet. Oh, I don't want to wait. It's really hot. I'm hungry. You just ate. I'm still hungry. You as scared as I am? I am. I'm okay. fairly terrified. <laughs> How's it look? <gasps> Looks dense. Yeah, it doesn't have the, the big holies like you're supposed to have with the English muffins. Oh, this was English muffin bread. Okay. Yeah. Which means that I may have added too much flour. I may hmm. not have been ready enough. Okay. Well, well it's an experiment. I, I say we can still put butter on it and eat it. I think so. Yeah. It's warm. Yeah. It tastes like English muffin. Oh, it does? I think so. Oh, yeah, it does. Hmm. Wow. It is dense. It's dense, but it tastes exactly like an English muffin. Wow, that's good. I like that. Here, oh, look. Look what I Oh. Thought. That wasn't even planned, too. Is it better or worse? Just about everything's better with honey. Yeah. yeah. Right, honey. Ah, ha, ha, ha. ha.
make something that I'll be honest with you, I have wanted to make for a lot of years. Um, what it is, and you can research it all you want, is pemmican. Um, I'm kind of big into doing some of the stuff the old way, and especially something like this, because this is a true survival food. If you do a little bit of research, you'll find that this goes back to Lewis and Clark, and this food in particular that we're looking at preparing here, this is how the Plains Indians actually survived the winter because they weren't just out hunting buffalo when it's 60 below. This is how they survived. So this is, it looks like lard, but it's not lard. It's actually beef tallow. And <clears throat> you want to use that, not lard. Um, I bought this in like big chunk forms. It's the hard fat, like the kidney fat from beef. And we had a little technical difficulty, so I didn't get to show you actually how I made it. But what I did was I had these big frozen chunks of uh, tallow fat and I cut them into small pieces like one inch by one inch, you know, however long. And I ran them through the grinder. I always grind it first on the biggest grinder plate that you've got. And when it's slightly frozen, it actually works a lot better. And then you take it and you can do it a couple of ways. You can put it in a big pot at about 200 degrees in your oven and it'll melt down. You'll have a lot of other stuff in there that you'll want to sift out. We ran ours through a cheesecloth and then I combined two batches that I made. I heated them more and I ran them through a cheesecloth again. So I really, really filtered it out. I just poured it into bread pans and you can see what we've got here. Looks like almond bark. Doesn't taste the same. Um, you can actually, you can cook with it. You can do whatever with it, but it's rendered down beef fat. That's what it is. So we've got that is one ingredient. Next ingredient, we've got blueberries and cranberries. Um, I started with these, you know, it says that they're dried cranberries. Well, they're dried to about, I don't know, they still have 40% of the moisture in them. So I made some custom racks. So what I did for drying the berries, we don't, we don't have a dehydrator primarily because we can't run it. Dehydrators use a lot of electricity and we're off grid solar, but we do have a wood stove. So I took just a regular cookie sheet, cookie rack thing. And I took some, what do they call it? Construction wire? Rabbit. Like I rabbit know. fencing. Yeah. And I bent up the corners so the berries wouldn't just fall off. I zip tied it to here and I set it up near the stove. It ran that way for approximately a week and a half and the berries were like 40% drier than they were before. What I found is that these berries, I, I don't know if you can see, but they have a skin on them, okay? That skin really is super good at preventing the moisture from getting out. So they need to be dry enough to actually powder them and I, I couldn't get them there. I even finally, finally I, I set them on the stove and they still weren't drying. So then I ran them through a blender, put them on a paper towel in here so it would just all fall through. And then I got them pretty good and dry and I ran them through the blender again. So what I've got then is powdered blueberries and powdered cranberries. I, I may have to run those through again. They, they got as dry as I could get them. Um, so we've got cra craisins, blueberries, tallow, and now we've got the beef. So the last item that we need is the meat. I want the cheapest, leanest cut of beef that I can find. You don't want any extra fat in it. We, we don't want anything other than the rendered tallow and we want like no moisture out of it. So I'm going to cut this up. We're going to dry this again. And again, we want it dry, not cooked. We're going to dry it the same way as we dried that. And from experience, I know this will actually dry. So we just want to get as much fat off it as we can. And then we're going to set it up on sheets. Probably a technical name, but I call them like cookie cooling racks. So that's what we're going to set them up on. Can't help but think this would 
work better if it were slightly frozen too. I'd say put it outside for a while, but it's not that cold out. Yeah. Big old chunk of fat on it. So I'm gonna trim this off. This knife seems to be not that sharp. Here's my knife. So it's kind of like, look, that's way sharp. It's kind of like you were making uh, jerky. You want it about that thin, right? It's a nice thin piece. We'll lay that on our rack. Yeah. And the, the reason you want it thin is because like I did with the berries, how I powdered them after drying them, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the meat. I'm going to powder it. You want it thin so it dries, and you want the fat off it so it doesn't spoil. Okay, so I started with about a seven pound roast. I'm keeping a small snack for tomorrow. I'm gonna to make a beef stew out of that. Um, other than that, this is the beef that we're going to use. We're going to dry this. Pray to God it goes faster than the, everything else. It should go really quick, so I think. And we'll dry this, and the next time we see you, we will be powdering it, and we will make our pemmican. Wow. Okay, so we have dried our meat. I dried it over the wood stove. Um, you got to get it dry, dry. You know, it's, you can easily just break it apart. You know, it's, it's crunchy, it's crisp. You know, you can hear that. Um, you wanna get the moisture out of it. And as I showed you before, we got cranberries. Oh, sorry, that's blueberries, cranberries. We are going to have, let's see. We're going to use some salt. And I have my beef tallow already rendered and that is ready to go. Um, I showed it to you the other day. I just kind of heated it up, thawed out, and we are ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do, we powdered those. We're going to powder the meat. So we're going to put them in our blender. And by powdered, I mean absolutely sawdust of the meat. Okay, I think we're going to start with this. And that. And that. Just okay. this and that, not just, the other thing? No, just a little this and that. Okay. Okay. This blender was like $19, and it's not exactly high quality, and it wouldn't really blend it. We broke it up in the tiny little pieces. We kind of got it mulched up, but we are going to let it dry even further overnight and tomorrow i will pick up again and try to blend it again it's just i made sure you want to make sure when you cut it up that there's no fat in the meat um as lean as possible what i really wanted to do is make it out of moose or uh, caribou but i didn't have that available so i wasn't able to do that so i used a beef like a round roast um we're going to let it dry again overnight on paper towels and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. It'll go pretty quick once once I have that stage done, but drying everything has been kind of a pain. A lot of people use a smoker and a smoker would really be a nice way to do it because you're putting that flavor into it and you're drying it at the same time. We're working on that project. We're just not quite there yet. So um, we'll pick this back up tomorrow and Hopefully have a final product. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is the next day. Um, had a little trouble drying the meat here. Just it, it just wasn't completely dry and then it doesn't blend that well. So last night we kind of blended it all. It's not as powdery as I wanted it to be. So we laid it out on cookie sheets and we dried it some more. Um, if I had the smoker up and running, this would have been much easier, but this is what we got here. Um, you can see it's 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 nice and powdery, dry, crispy now. So um, I'm gonna run it back through the blender again and get it really, really fine. 
and then we'll start putting it together. There is your finished product. As you can see, we ended up with about 15 ounces. And to that, we're gonna start adding our ingredients. So we're gonna add about 2% by volume of salt. And I always used iodized salt. So we got 0.6 ounces of salt in there. This being a survival food, you, you gotta think, what do you need to survive food-wise? Um, you need protein. You need a way to digest that protein, which is where the fat comes, and the fat also brings the energy. And then some sugars from our blueberries and cranberries, uh, those will also give you that energy that you need. Now, you don't need to add blueberries and cranberries. That's just, that's something that I wanna do. Um, just to kind of sweeten it up a little bit in in fact it may actually reduce the shelf life a little bit we're adding three tablespoons of the ground up cranberry mix and then we will add the same of the blueberry when you grind this stuff up it can be really tough to grind especially with my not so good blender um, so you may have some chunks in there and that's perfectly okay some actual berry chunks aren't going to hurt a thing so now I've got my blueberries, my cranberries, my salt, my powdered meat in there. I'm gonna mix this thoroughly and then I'm gonna start adding my beef tallow. As we add this, we're just gonna add enough that it makes a nice sticky mixture. If you go too light on it, it's dry and crumply. If you go too much on it, then it becomes greasy and that's not what we want. So we're gonna add about that much. We're gonna mix it in see how it looks now the the berries and the meat are going to absorb the tallow they will absorb that right up and that'll be the binder that holds all this together so as you can tell it didn't really do much so we're gonna add some more or we'll just do it in portions like this till we get it just right and you can kind of see it just it absorbs right into that super dry meat and the berry powder but it's not, it's not packable yet. And the tallow is pretty warm because I just melted it down on the stove so it, it absorbs nicely. Once we get a good mixture, we will pack it into our pan and we'll, it'll set up quick. After testing it, kind of tasting it, I'm gonna add some more cranberries and some more blueberries. So we're going to pack it down really really good I want to get as much air out of it as possible okay well there we go we're going to go set this outside for a little bit let it set up we'll bring it back and try it apparently you need to spray the pan before you do this and try to take it out um, so I just gave it a taste test I think after doing this I think the meat needs to be ground finer and it's probably still not completely set up but I tasted it and I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of amazed. It's really good. You can taste the salt. You can definitely taste the berries. The meat definitely needs to be ground finer. I have to get an improved blender. This one doesn't work so good. The Indians didn't have blenders, so they used a mortar and pestle, which would really get it down to the individual fibers. And I don't think this did it quite right. So, I don't know. It's good. Survival food. That's really good. So I will get this cubed up and um, vacuum sealed. And this right here, one block of this, th this would last me, this is a month's worth of food. It doesn't look like it, but it is. One of the best survival foods you can find. So, all right, that's it. We'll make some improvements and make it again a little later. Well, there we have it. Um, I've got, what is it, 13 pieces of pemmican that have been vacuum sealed. I'll be honest with you, I really, really like the flavor of it. Um, it's like beef jerky with a hint of salt and the sweetness from the berries. It's actually, it's actually really, really good. Um, I enjoy it. Now, what did I learn from this process? A, getting stuff absolutely dry matters. Um, my only method at this time without a smoker is over the wood stove and 
I guess I could have gone another week trying to get a dryer. It just really takes forever. The way to do it is in a smoker or in an oven, but of course that takes gas and a smoker, I can get that set up. So what happened there is that the meat isn't a fine enough grind. And my blender, I'll be honest with you, is not very good. Uh, the blades aren't even sharp. That seems weird. Um, it didn't really powder it enough. So the meat is a little bit too coarse to really, really work the way it's supposed to. Is it good? Will it last? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the tallow is right. The berry is right. Um, the flavor is astounding. So this right here should last, I'm, I don't know, 100 years. I probably won't be around to test it that long. But, uh, you know, in, in these little packs, you can easily throw them in a backpack, throw them on a snow machine um, in the back of it. And you can always have that survival food. So um, once the smoker is up and going, I will try this again with a better blender so I can really crunch them up. And uh, we'll try it again. But for now, I'd say it's a success. A. B. I learned something on how best to um, produce it. And C. It's delicious. I understand why they made it now. So... Yeah, there you go. All right, from Alaska, cut the cord. Love you, bye.